Hi buddies, I'm Miss Christy and welcome to my kitchen for another yummy story from Bud Warner Memorial Library. Today we're going to read Please Please the Bees by Gerald Kelly and then we're going to make our very own honey grams. Yummy! Please Please the Bees by Gerald Kelly. Benedict was a creature of habit. He liked to do the same thing every day. Every morning he woke up at the same time. Every morning he stretched. He scratched. And he yawned. A great yawn. Every morning the bees delivered three jars full of honey. One, two, three. Three. Benedict ate the same breakfast he'd eaten since he was just a fuzzy cub. Toast with honey and tea with extra honey. Next came his daily routine. Practicing his violin, perfecting his honey cake recipe, knitting, and running his errands. He sure looks silly on that little scooter. At night, he'd read, then have one last cup of honey tea before bed. Life was sweet. Until one morning. One morning, things changed. They weren't the same. In fact, something terribly unsame had happened. Looks like his jars of honey are empty. There was no more honey. The bees had gone on strike. They feel very taken advantage of, don't they? Benedict's breakfast wasn't the same without honey. Without his honey tea, he couldn't knit. Practice was dreadful. Looks like he really lost his temper and broke his violin. He didn't even bother with the errands. Benedict became deeply discouraged. Just then he heard someone say, Hey, you, in the fur coat. It was a very small bee with a remarkably loud voice. We need to talk, said the bee. Talk, <laughs> grumbled Benedict. I let you all live in my yard. All I ask for is a few jars of honey. You should be grateful, not go on strike. A few jars, said the bee. Buddy, we deliver three jars of honey to you every day, every month, every year. Do the math, Einstein. The hive is a wreck, the bee continued. <clears throat> It's all we can do to keep the walls from falling in. The roof leaks, wind blows through the cracks. The last three queens up and quit on us because of the lousy working conditions. The bee showed Benedict to the garden. Look, the bee said, weeds everywhere. We have to fly miles away just to find enough flowers to make our honey. So we voted to strike. You're taking us for granted, the bee declared. You want honey? Things need to change. It's up to you, bear. And with that, the very small bee flew off. The thought of losing his honey sent a chill down Benedict's spine. He had a lot to think about. Maybe I've been too selfish, Benedict said to himself. I never thought about what the bees need. But how am I going to make this right? So he did some research. Then he did a little shopping. And he did a lot of work. Cleaning up the yard and fixing the hive and planting flowers. 
Benedict even learned how to harvest honey. I suppose it's a bit rude to expect them to do it all themselves, he thought. Finally, he was ready to show the bees all the work he'd done. What would they think? He held his breath as he waited. Then he heard the remarkably loud voice of the very small bee. Drop the signs, girls! Time to get back to work! There they all go, flying off to the flowers. These days, Benedict is still a creature of habit. He still has his daily routine, but he doesn't take the honey for granted anymore. He knows his life is sweet, but now it's even sweeter. Or all right, buddies, that was quite a buzzworthy story about bees and all the things they need, wasn't it? And it's important to remember that we need bees not only because they make delicious honey, but also because they're important pollinators for all the fruits and vegetables that we grow and eat and enjoy. So now we're going to start, get started with making our honey grams. And we're, I'm going to use a food processor, processor, but you can also do this with a mixer or even with just a couple of butter knives. The big part that I'm using the food processor for is to cut all of the butter into my dry ingredients and get it into like fine little crumbs. So now I'm going to add two cups of whole wheat flour for my first dry ingredient. And then I've got a cup of brown sugar and I've got a generous half teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of baking soda. I'm gonna add all those in and just give it a little mix real quick just to blend them all together. All right, so now that I've got all of my dry ingredients mixed together, I'm gonna add my wet. I've got a tablespoon of vanilla extract. And I've got a whole stick of butter and a third of a cup of honey. And again, I'm just going to pulse this in my food processor for a little while to blend it all together and chop that butter up real fine. tablespoons of milk. Now we're going to take this and I'm going to wrap it up and put it in the fridge for at least an hour to chill so that way the dough firms up and I can roll it out flat. All right, buddies. So now that my dough has chilled for at least an hour in the fridge, I'm going to roll it out on some parchment paper here. 
And I want to be sure to use plenty of flour to kind of coat my rolling pin because this is a really sticky dough. And we're going to roll it out into a big square, probably about a quarter of an inch thick is what you're going for. And if you have cookie cutters, you could cut them out into fun shapes. If you want to make just traditional graham crackers, then we're going to just score our big sheet of dough and poke some holes in it. So you can see it's a very crumbly dough and I am just going to score it about two by four inch rectangles. Then we'll poke some holes in them just so they get nice and fluffy. this onto our baking sheet and then we're going to bake it for about 10 minutes 10 to 12 minutes at 350 degrees and while we're waiting for that to bake I have one more story to share with y'all it's the honeybee by Kristen Hall illustrated by Isabel Arsenault Hall and illustrated by Isabel Arsenault a field, a tree, climb it and see. For miles all around you grow wild and free flowers. But then, shh, what's that? Do you hear it? You're near it. It's closer. It's coming. It's buzzing, it's humming, a bee. Four tiny wings, they buzz and they sing. They're clapping and flapping, the busy bees lapping. Lap, 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 tap, 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 searching, perching. This flower the bee has chosen, this is the flower the pollen grows in. This is the flower, its color so bright, its sweet blooming scent calls the bee from its flight. It says this one. Such a long trip, it's time for a sip. Sugary, watery, nectar. There now. It drills now, the bee sips and spills now. There now, it swills now, it sits oh so still now. There now, it fills now. It's back to the hill now, more pollen, more nectar. It's meal time, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, a crowd swarming and teeming and loud. Flapping, flying, landing, prying. All of this nectar, it's ours, it's ours. They work on the flowers for hours and hours until... Little bees with heavy sacks.
lifting, shifting, turning back. Zoom, they race. Zoom, they chase. Zoom, they zoom and pick up the pace. And then zoom, they see it up ahead. Our hive, our hive, our hiding place. Watch them arrive. Watch how their hive buzzes alive. Buzz. Where are the flowers you found today? Dance for us, foragers. Show us the way. A dance begins. Waggle, wiggle. The dance is lovely. Tremble, jiggle. The dance goes straight now in a line. A figure eight is the final sign. Oh, now we know. We know where to go. Thanks for the secrets and thanks for the show. New foragers leave on a searching mission while house bees march forward with hungry ambition. Choo choo, that's what we do. We suck out the nectar, we suck it straight through. Choo choo, we're changing its makeup. We're giving the nectar a chemical shakeup. Choo choo, we make it like glue. Make it thick, make it stick, make it slick, make it new. Choo choo, choo choo, at last we're finally through. But there's more to do at home. Like fill the honeycomb. They jam its cells with nectar plaster, then rev up their engines, room, and beat their wings faster. Whoosh! They're strong despite their size. Swoosh! The nectar cools and it dries. It's getting thicker now. Wings moving quicker now. Fast! Fan! Pump! Blast! We did it! We did it! It's honey at last. And now to keep it safe, tiny honey cells are capped. Liquid gold is sealed and trapped. And only when it's needed most, a hungry day, will these faults be tapped. Outside the hive come shorter days, cooler winds and softer rays. Fewer eggs to birth and raise. With the queen less busy, the hives less buzzy, and bees a mass all soft and fuzzy. Come now rest, join our nest, huddle and cuddle, the winter's our test. All cold and white outside, there they are in their hive. A bud, drip some mud. Creatures stir in the melting snow. Inside the hive, the bees, they know. Hmm, this, it's springtime. Hmm, a life anew. One little bee in a tree knows what to do. Watch it zoom. A field, a tree, climate and sea. From a far away hive flew this hard working, honey sweet bee. Mm mm, buddies, don't those honey grams smell yummy? All right, so you can cut them and break them all the way into pieces once they've cooled. Or if you already cut them into shapes, just let them cool and enjoy. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you at the library.